The Walking Dead A New Frontier really bothers me. Releasing not too long after the narrative masterpiece that was the first season, The Walking Dead A New Frontier was supposed to be a strong continuation to Clementine's story, and that's not exactly what we got. Before we continue, I want to make a few things clear. If you couldn't tell already, I'm not exactly a huge fan of this game, and I will be criticizing it a lot throughout the video. If you thought The Walking Dead A New Frontier is a good game, then that is totally fine. A New Frontier clearly does a lot of things well, and I can acknowledge that. But this game, of all The Walking Dead games, has the most glaring flaws that need to be talked about. My problems with this game mostly come from the story, so I'll be barely talking about the gameplay. And that's because this is a Telltale game. You already know the formula. Very boring puzzles, dialogue options, and choices that mostly don't matter. Also, I will be talking about the story in detail, so here is your spoiler warning. But with that said, let's not drag it any longer. Here's why I don't like The Walking Dead A New Frontier. The first thing that needs to be talked about is the introduction of our new main protagonist. After the cliffhanger ending of Season 2, you wouldn't expect Telltale to pivot away from the core story so fast, but that's exactly what happens. Instead of Clementine, this game's playable character is instead Javier Garcia. Clementine is still in the game, and she's playable in flashbacks, but she's relegated to mostly a side character role, and trust me, I'll be going into more detail about that later. But first, I need to talk about Javier. Now let me say something good about this game from the jump. Javier is an excellent character. I ate all those. Yeah, me. You? By yourself? Now, nah. yeah, what can I say? I fucking love pudding. He has the perfect balance of caring father figure and smart mouth prick that really sells his character. A lot of it has to do with the vocal performance from Jeff Shine. He captures Javier's personality and smartass persona perfectly. I also must say I enjoyed Javier's sense of humor throughout the game. It's not forced down your throat and some of his lines did get a smile out of me. Okay, never pull that lever again, Javier. The Walking Dead and New Frontier clearly decided to take a different route with its story. Unlike The Walking Dead Seasons 1 and 2, which focus on strangers forming a family-like relationship in the post-apocalypse, A New Frontier focuses on an actual family trying to survive in the post-apocalypse. This game's entire story is centered on Javier's family, and it's actually not a bad premise at all. Let's briefly go over some of the characters before we go any further. Now, before this segment begins, let me be clear. My opinion on these characters is, of course, subjective. A character I hate might be someone that you love. Kenny is a prime example of this. People either love Kenny or hate Kenny. There is no in-between. But with that said, am I the only person who sided with David the whole game? I must say, I actually really like David in this game. In fact, David's character arc in this game is very similar to Kenny's character arc from Season 2. David is portrayed as a giant asshole who has very bad outbursts of anger that often lead to turmoil within the group, just like with Kenny in Season 2. However, just like with Kenny, his asshole persona hides a genuinely good person. Sure, those outbursts would get rather extreme and sometimes violent, but it was almost always directed towards someone who was a possible threat to the group. Now with that said, I want to point out something that did bother me about David. In Episode 5, Telltale cranks up David's asshole behavior to heights that are just straight up unrealistic, but I'm going to be saving the details on that for later. Just bear with me, okay? Now I'm going to be honest here, I did not like Kate all that much. She's not a terrible character, but compared to other characters from this series, I just don't think Kate holds up all that well. What I didn't like about Kate was how in Episode 3, she wants to abandon David as soon as he enters the story. In fact, one of the major decisions in Episode 3 is going along with Kate's plan to leave Richmond, or go along with David's plan and bring Gabe and Kate to David's house while Javi and him confront Joan. David's plan is the plan that literally everyone agreed with, and Kate is willing to abandon all of it within a day of her reunion with David. Now yes, Kate and David have a troubled marriage, clearly, and Kate has shown that she has feelings for Javier, but seriously? I find it very odd how badly Kate wanted to leave David early on. It's bad because Kate has almost no reason to leave as badly as she does. The closest thing to an explanation is that Richmond is run by the same group that killed Mariana and raided Prescott, but it's later revealed that the raids were done by a small group of New Frontier mercenaries, unbeknownst to David and most other members of the New Frontier. So again, why are you so adamant on leaving when you have no good reason behind it? Again, I don't think Kate is a horrible character, but I didn't exactly shed a tear when she died. Oh yeah, and Jesus is in this game. I'm not even gonna waste time talking about him. 
Jesus adds literally nothing to this story. And when I say nothing, I mean nothing. You can cut him from the story and there will be no significant changes. Aside from being a comic favorite and being voiced by Garrus from Mass Effect, why is he even here? Mariana was another character I liked for the whole two episodes that she lasted. Telltale usually never gets child characters right, so Mariana is actually a really nice breath of fresh air. It's actually a shame that she dies as early on as she does. Speaking of child characters, let's talk about Gabe. Gabe just might be the most controversial character in this entire game. Your experience with Gabe all depends on how tolerant you are of very mouthy and disrespectful teenagers. Because trust me, there are certainly moments throughout this game where Gabe was really testing my patience. More specifically, the scene in the apartment with Tripp and Eleanor. But before we get into more detail about that, I need to talk about something before we proceed. To give The Walking Dead a new frontier its credit, there are a fair share of choices that do actually matter. More specifically, the train scene in Episode 2. The decision to shoot Conrad or not does have an impact on the game. In fact, Conrad can survive until the very end of the game if you make the right decisions. And choosing not to shoot Conrad means Gabe doesn't flip his shit and snitch on Javier for shooting Conrad, and thus Eleanor and Tripp don't hate your guts, and the player doesn't get mad at Gabe for being an emotional little shit. It seems like the right path to go on, right? The problem is, this particular pathway is hidden behind one of the most one-sided choices in the entire game. I think I speak for a lot of people when I say that when you play this game, you side with Clementine almost 100% of the time. Aside from being the franchise character, let's be honest, if Clem wasn't in the trailers, odds are you wouldn't even buy this game. So when Conrad points a gun at Clementine and threatens to shoot Gabe, me and 90% of all other players shot him, which led to the apartment outburst which is the primary reason why people don't like Gabe. It sucks because if you take Conrad's deal, Conrad actually goes through a very nice redemption arc. The problem is that almost nobody got to see Conrad's redemption arc because in order to see Conrad's story play out, you have to betray the most beloved character in the entire series. Now, with that said, let's finally talk about Clementine. Clementine is great in this game, obviously. However, Clementine's character is not the issue here. It's her presence in the story that's the problem. Like I just said, Clementine is the franchise cornerstone of the Walking Dead games, so when I tell you that Clementine is relegated to a side character, it might make a few fans upset. Now like I said, Telltale clearly wanted to take a different approach to its story and I'm okay with that, but because the story is centered on Javier and his family, Clementine's story gets brushed to the side. Again, I don't have a huge issue with that. My issue is Telltale trying to force Clementine into Javier's story. With that said, let's talk about Clementine's actual story in this game. Let me say this right off the bat, whatever ending you got at the end of Season 2 does not change a thing in this game. The only thing it changes are new playable flashbacks with either Jane or Kenny. That's it. But anyway, without wasting any time, the real issue I have with Clementine's story is that she has no real reason to tag along with Javier for as long as she does. In episode 2, after the junkyard shootout, Clem says, I can take you back to Prescott, make sure your family's okay. But then I'm hitting the road. But after dropping off Javier, the new frontier arrives at Prescott shortly after, and Clementine is clearly seen in Prescott. I thought you were hitting the road, Clementine, but okay, whatever. After that, Clem tags along with the group to Richmond, even though Richmond was not her destination. In fact, after learning that the New Frontier took over Richmond, you'd think Clem would find any reason not to go, but she still goes into the tunnel towards Richmond. Sure, she eventually does leave, but why didn't Clementine leave earlier? She had literally no reason to enter the tunnel. But then, we wouldn't get the scene of Conrad flipping his shit in the train car. This is what I meant by Clementine being forced into Javier's story, and guess what? This isn't even the best example. In episode 3, if you choose to kill Dr. Lingard, he will actually tell Clementine AJ's location. However, after learning where AJ is, Clementine still sticks around with Javier in the group for the last two episodes. Now sure, Clem could have grown a liking to Javier in the group, fine. But did she grow so much of a liking to them that she's willing to leave AJ waiting so she can help Javier stop a civil war in Richmond, which involves a group of people that Clementine is not exactly fond of? I'm sorry, but I'm not buying that. You want me to hammer the point home even more? Okay. In episode 3, Clementine literally says, As soon as I find him, taking that truck and getting the hell out of here. Okay, you have a truck, and you know where AJ is. Why aren't you leaving? 
Clementine's character, especially for the first three episodes, is so inconsistent and it isn't even to any fault of her own. It's obvious Telltale is fine with narrative inconsistencies if it means Clementine is in the story to keep the player invested. Another issue is that Clementine isn't given much time to bond with any of these characters. She gets a good amount of scenes with Javier for the first two episodes, but as soon as episode 3 rolls around and Davy gets reintroduced into the story, the entire story shifts to Javier's family and trying to take care of the whole Richmond debacle, and Clementine's importance to the overall story is almost non-existent episode 4 and onwards. Seriously, Clementine for the last two episodes is basically a prolonged cameo appearance, since she isn't given anything to do other than mindlessly tang along with Javier. This, to me, highlights one of the biggest issues in this game. The writers had an obvious issue balancing all the characters and subplots in this game. Just in the first three episodes, there's a love triangle between Kate, David, and Javi, a possible romance between Gabe and Clementine, Conrad's redemption arc is thrown in there if you didn't shoot him, Eleanor and Trip are also given scenes of their fragmented romance, and when episode 3 rolls around, the game basically makes the Richmond plotline the center focus of the story, and even then, there are still plot lines like David stealing AJ, Clem trying to find AJ on top of Javi and David finding out New Frontier mercenaries are responsible for the ratings on peaceful communities. Almost all the subplots that I listed either get overshadowed or hastily concluded with no thought or care. And the primary reason for it has to do with time. This game took me a little over 5 hours to beat. That is not enough time to flesh out most of these plot lines to the point where it could be considered good quality. And it's painfully obvious that the writers didn't know what to do with some of them either. For example, if you didn't shoot Conrad, he's almost non-existent in episodes 4 and 5. In fact, in episode 5, Conrad doesn't make an appearance until the very end of the episode. Trip and Eleanor's relationship goes absolutely nowhere, and Clementine and Gabe's romance just might be the most forced romance I've ever seen in a video game. With all that said, let's talk about what is, in my opinion, the worst part of the game. In Episode 3, a flashback reveals what happened to AJ and why he isn't with Clementine at the start of the game. Okay, let me explain this in detail so I don't miss anything. Shortly after joining the New Frontier, AJ gets a sickness that is apparently so bad that AJ will die if it's not taken care of. Clem sneaks into a camp to find medicine for AJ's sickness, and the player is given a choice on whether or not to use the medicine or put it back, since Clementine is stealing the medicine. Spoiler alert, this choice does not matter. Clementine gets caught, and David and Dr. Lingard repeatedly say that AJ was a lost cause and that he was going to die, to the point where David says, We should have left him out in the woods a week ago! After a heated argument, Clementine gets kicked out of the New Frontier, but just before she actually leaves... Uh-uh. He stays. Can't take him with you. That ship has sailed. You're cruel. You don't even want to take care of him! Clem. He's in no condition to travel. Let him go, Clem. He'll only drag you down out there. No! You monsters! This is one of the dumbest moments in any video game I've ever seen in my entire life, and I'm being serious. David just went on a giant rant about how they're wasting supplies on AJ because he's gonna die anyway, so why the hell are you stealing him away from Clementine? You're wasting supplies just by taking him in. Also, let me be clear again, David's exact words were, We should have left him out in the woods a week ago! Not even two minutes later, and David is willingly bringing AJ back into the group. This scene makes absolutely no fucking sense, and is easily the worst part about the game. It's even funnier in the flashback scene in episode 4 when Ava shows up and tries to talk to Clementine. Even when I directly asked Ava, she could not give me a good answer as to why David took AJ. This was the thing that dragged down the season for me. This is easily Telltale's lowest point, at least from a writing perspective. Now with all that stated, I want to quickly pivot and bring up some other issues I had with this game that isn't related to the story. First of all, interacting with people and objects while walking around is as bland as it's ever been. I don't understand why Telltale completely abandoned the complex and well-thought-out puzzles from Season 1. Sure, the puzzles in Season 1 weren't great, but they were much more thought-out compared to the puzzles in The New Frontier. Puzzles in this game devolve into finding two items to open up a pathway to proceed to the next area. No thought or complex thinking required. The dialogue in this game is amazing. I've said it once, I'll say it again. Telltale is really good at writing dialogue. That van is our home. 
It's all we got. That sounds like a no. How about you just give me directions like a normal person? How about I shoot you and take the van anyway? Voice acting all around is great. Everybody involved gave a great performance. The character models for all the characters look fine. However, some of the side character models look especially bad. Also, character model glitches were rather consistent throughout the game. Now, for this next segment, I want to do a quick deep dive into episodes 4 and 5, because that's when the writing goes from bad to absolutely terrible. Episode 4 doesn't start off too bad until you get to the armory scene when Gabe does something unspeakably stupid that results in Javier getting stabbed. Javi meets Clem at the hospital, and Clem agrees to stitch up his shoulder wound. This is where we get another flashback for Clementine, and it's easily the worst one. Very shortly after getting kicked out of the New Frontier, Ava shows up and drops off supplies for Clementine and tells her how much the New Frontier cares for her. I'm sorry, but this scene is so dumb. Yes, Clementine, after kicking you out and stealing your kid for no good reason, I want you to know that we still care for you. The dialogue in this particular scene is especially bad, since like I said before, Ava gives no good reason as to why they took AJ. Ava then goes on a monologue. For me. Staying alive has always been about finding people I could trust as much as they trusted me. That's what the new frontier has been. A silver lining. Made me feel worth a damn. Kept me going in the worst of times. You'll find yours. I know you will. No! Seriously, the writing in this game is so fucking bad. And you want to know what's even worse about this scene? If you say what most people would say in this scenario, Ava then gets pissed off at Clementine. You'll just have to find something new that- Shut the hell up! Oh, grow the hell up, kid. I know I praised the dialogue earlier, and while I still stand by that, this scene is very poorly written. And trust me, it's only gonna get worse from here. Later on, you arrive at the apartment scene where Gabe snitches on Javier for killing Conrad. I already went into detail about this scene, so I'm not gonna do it again. After stealing an armored truck, Ava calls Javier and notifies him that Joan plans on executing David in front of the whole town. After arriving at the gallows, it's revealed that Eleanor spoke to Joan, basically throwing more dirt onto Javier. And then the game gives you two big decisions. Save Trip or Ava, and after that you're given the choice to take Clint's deal or shoot Joan on the spot. The first choice may look like it matters, since whoever you try to save ends up dying, but no, no it doesn't. Yes, Trip or Ava will survive until episode 5, but they're both shortly killed maybe 15 minutes into the episode. So no, it's another illusion of choice. The second decision was a rather easy decision for me. The only thing that this choice dictates is if Clint survives or Joan survives. And after this scene, Clint or Joan are never seen again. So again, it doesn't matter. After that absolute mess, Javi calls Kate and tells her to get to the square so they can get the hell out of there. As she's driving to the square, one of Joan's men throws a Molotov at the truck, causing her to lose control and crash into a wall. The truck ends up exploding and leaving a huge hole in the wall. Walkers start pouring into Richmond and then the episode ends. You thought that was bad? Don't worry, episode 5 just might be worse. Again, I'm not going to give a whole episode summary, just some of the lowlights. First of all, the thing that sticks out the most in Episode 5 is David's change of character and Kate having a Force Redemption arc. Let's have a discussion about something real quick. The hole in Richmond's wall, was that actually Kate's fault? A Molotov hit the truck that she was driving and she lost control. How is that Kate's fault? In fact, Kate feels so guilty she says this. I'm glad Mariana didn't live to see this. Are you fucking serious? On top of Kate's sudden redemption arc is David going from a hot-headed prick to a complete fucking psychopath. I'm not fucking around here, Hobby. If she's dead, you're dead. I'll throw you to the walkers myself. David goes absolutely batshit in this episode to the point where it's almost comedic. It starts off in the apartment scene with Fern and Javi. After the situation gets diffused, David proceeds to break Fern's arm and shoot Rufus without any hesitation. This leads to a scene where everybody gets scared of David and then he storms off and Javi gives chase. That scene was pretty bad, but by far the worst scene in this episode is the junkyard scene, also known as the final decision of the game. This scene, making sense or not, is all dependent on one thing. Did you accept Kate's feelings? If so, the following scene makes sense and all is good. However, if you rejected Kate, then this entire scene just falls apart. Despite me not having any feelings for Kate, despite me being on David's side the entire game, David will have one final outburst where he fights Javier. 
this ending is easily the worst ending in any Telltale game. First of all, the reason why David loses his shit and fights Javier is because Kate gets emotional and decides to drop this bombshell. I can't believe I ever loved either of you. David's been acting like a complete psycho all episode. Why the fuck did you think it was appropriate to say that? Secondly, this is like the third time Javier gets thrown under the bus this season. And finally, the entire reason why this argument at the junkyard even started is because Kate is so hellbent on saving Richmond, she's willing to let her dangerous husband take off with her only kid. Seriously, watch the scene for yourself. Kate does not give the slightest fuck. We can't wait any longer. We have to go help Richmond. This episode is easily one of the worst episodes of this entire franchise, and it's not even debatable. In fact, it just might be the worst. Now, with that said, there is something I found kind of cool that I did want to point out. Your choices with Clementine do determine what she does in the final scene. It's actually surprisingly in-depth for a Telltale game. And yes, what Clementine does in the final scene can determine who lives or dies. See, there's an actual choice that does matter, and it's surprisingly consistent with previous choices. All you have to do is wait until the very end of the game. Nice. Good one, Telltale. Now, with all of that finally said, I want to be clear on something. The Walking Dead Season 1 is one of the best story-driven video games I've ever played in my entire life. With masterful dialogue, amazing characters, and fantastic writing, Telltale was able to create one of the best narrative-driven video games of all time. To see this franchise fall from such heights genuinely saddens me. The magic of Telltale's style of storytelling slowly dwindled over the years, and the quality of the writing spiraled down with it. The Walking Dead A New Frontier is, for me, the weakest game Telltale has ever released. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot that this game does well, but the positives do not outweigh the negatives here. I remembered when I first played this game, and I promise you, I wanted to like it, but I couldn't. The difference in quality when compared to the other games in this franchise is night and day. The Walking Dead A New Frontier is an obvious black mark on an otherwise beloved series. The best thing I can say about this game is how it set Clem up perfectly for the final season. And trust me, after this game, Clementine is more than deserving of a good send-off. I may or may not talk about the final season, I guess we'll see.